Hauntings with Danny Glover. Don't believe me, I thought it was the stupidest idea I've heard of. In Pure Luck, Lionheart Sunday, Pure Luck Monday, NBC Double Crunch Weekend. Number one in cars. Number one in trucks. Number one in America. Pure Atlanta area Ford dealers want to stay number one during Ford sales leadership clearance. Just announced. Now get $16.50 package savings on the all-new 93 Ford Ranger. Plus, save on every clearance price. Taurus, Escort, F-150, and Explore. Get low financing or cash back. Make no payments till April. Pure Atlanta area Ford dealers sales leadership clearance ends soon. Hurry, it all ends January 5th. Coming up tonight on 11 Alive News. I'm Dean Phillips updating you on some of the stories you'll see on 11 Alive News tonight. More exclusive evidence in the Saratokar's murder investigation. A man named in a police document who may have been asked to pull the trigger. Not such a happy new year for firefighters. We'll show you how they kicked off 93 in downtown Atlanta. And more than $20 million for less than three hours of football. The Peach Bowl brings big bucks to Atlanta. The Bonnie has her first forecast of the year. Look who's picking Hardy's Fried Chicken. This sure is Max to Colonel. This is Hardy's All Pro Chicken. Right now, for just $5.99, tackle an eight-piece Hardy pack. Hey, I don't mind if I do. Or for just $2.99, score a two-piece lunch classic with biscuit, mashed potatoes, and a 20-ounce Coca-Cola classic. From here on out, this is the chicken I'm picking. Brrr. It's enough to make a grown man cry. It's enough to make the Colonel cry. <laughs> Are you ready for some real food? Hardy, Hardy. On December 26th, the remarkable new Lincoln Mark 8 was launched. But that's just the start. Now, another remarkable event is taking off. Your Lincoln Mercury dealer's final countdown. Counting down prices on our entire inventory. Mercury Capri, sticker priced over $2,000 less than last year. Red carpet lease savings on Grand Marquis. Clearance savings on Sable and Cougar, Fraser Wagon and Sedan. The final countdown continues. But hurry, time is running out. Live reports from the Congressional Inauguration, Monday and Tuesday on 11 Alive News. This is the NBC Sports Prudential Update. Now, Jim Lampley. Welcome back to our NFL updates, to our, in, <laughs> to our Bowl Day update studio in New York. In the Sugar Bowl game in New Orleans, Alabama's gotten a two-yard touchdown run from Sherman Williams, set up by a Sam Shade interception, and now second-ranked Alabama leads Miami 13-3 late in the second quarter. It is the first time all this season that Miami has trailed by as many as 10 points. The National Football League playoffs begin this weekend, and on Sunday we'll have the wild-card matchup between the Oilers and the Bills from Buffalo. For Houston, Warren Moon has returned from a broken upper arm, but he did not start in last week's win over Buffalo. So the question is, Will Warren Moon start Sunday in the rematch? Earlier, I asked Moon how the recovery is going. Well, I'm feeling pretty good right now. Uh, my shoulder is responding very well to the treatment that I've had the last four or five weeks. And it becomes a little stronger and uh, a little bit more flexible each week. And I think really by next week, I'll, I'll be back to normal. But uh, right now, I still have a little bit of uh, mobility that I need to get back in it. And it's still healing. I think by next week, they think it'll be completely healed. Are you expecting to start Sunday? I'd like to. Uh, Jack's trying to hold that as long as he can, and uh, Cody and I are both getting the same amount of time in practice this week, so he's going to make a decision here pretty quickly. I'm assuming that sometime Sunday morning, Jack Pardee will look you in the eye and ask you to help him make the decision as to how to deploy the two quarterbacks during the game on Sunday. Uh, is that a difficult conversation for you to have, or do you find it easy to be blunt, honest with him about how you feel? No, it, it's not difficult. I, I think Jack already knows, and it's just a matter of him making that decision. Um, he knows exactly what he has in both of us. Uh, I think he knows which guy he wants to start and which guy he would rather have back up the other one. So it, he's just kind of holding that to uh, make it a little bit more difficult for Buffalo to prepare. Our coverage of the Oilers and the Bills begins with NFL Live at a special time, noon Eastern time. O.J. Simpson with a general look at the question of whether the Bills are dominant enough to make it to a third consecutive Super Bowl. Right now, we're going to go back to Miami to rejoin Don Crickey and Bob Trumpy at the Orange Bowl game. Don and Bob. Tennessee 38, Boston College 23. Florida State 20, Florida Nebraska State 7 at halftime of the Federal Express Ohio Orange State Bowl. 14. And Happy New Year once again from Don Crickey and Bob Trumpy. Interesting first half, some very big plays in this game. And also a very good job, Trump, by the Florida State defense stopping the power run game of Nebraska. 
holding their top back to just 2.6 yards a carry. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, they average 6.6 yards a carry. The two of them, uh, Jones and Derek Brown, for the season, 2-6 in his first half. It's not worked. Uh, ne Nebraska relies on the running game. They couldn't get it done. Florida State, we saw what we expected we'd see. For score of the game, Tamara Vanover, the sensational freshman, ran a post pattern, beat John Reese. This was from 25 yards out, and Florida State went in front at this point, seven to nothing. Later, Nebraska would score on a most sensational play. Tommy Frazier, their freshman quarterback, drops back, takes a deep look. Now he's throwing into the wind at the north end of the stadium. Lofts the ball high. Cornerback Corey Sawyer, Florida State, goes up, tips the ball. But it comes down in the hands of Corey Dixon of Nebraska. And the Huskers were on the board. It's interesting what Bobby Bowden had at halftime. He said, these guys can go back and beat us. Let's see what the head coach, Tom Osborne of Nebraska, thinks as he talked with John Dockery. Thank you, Don Cricket. Coach, uh, the touchdown before the half, what did it do for your team? Well, I think that we played maybe a little score would indicate we gave him a cheap touchdown and we missed a couple field goals and uh, we feel maybe the score could be 17 13 right now pretty close so we just got to turn it up and notch, take a little better care of the ball execute better we made a lot of mistakes Florida State has a good team but I think you'll see us play awful hard the second half was there anything specific on the field goal or did he just miss them I don't know uh, those things are those things just happen and uh, we're, we feel bad about it. I'm sure that nobody feels worse than the kicker but we'll We'll come back and do all right. Any specific adjustments for the second half? Well, we've, we've talked about a few things, but the main thing is execution. We've had some plays that have been there, haven't executed quite like we need to, particularly on the options. Okay, thank you, Coach. Good okay, luck. John. Okay, Doc. Once again, Nebraska finding itself in the dilemma they are in so often when they come to the big bowl games. Down in a pass situation without a great pass offense. And now a word from Federal Express. On behalf of our 90,000 Federal Express employees worldwide, we're extremely pleased to once again be part of the Federal Express Orange Bowl. Miami serves as the gateway for Federal Express to all Latin American cities, and we're proud to be part of this great city and its continuing growth. Our Federal Express family extends our warmest wishes for a happy and healthy new year, and we thank you for your business. Now let's break down a quick scoring summary. First quarter score to Mario Vanover, 25-yard reception, 7-0 Seminoles. Dan Mowry hit a 40-yard field goal in the second quarter. The Knolls extended their lead at this point to 10-0. Not long after, it was 17-0. Kez McCorvey on a four-yard touchdown reception. And then Mowry hit another field goal to extend the Florida State lead to 20 to nothing. Corey Dixon with that juggling act in the end zone finally got Nebraska on the board in the second quarter late in the second quarter with a minute and a half to play and Nebraska now trails at halftime 20 to 7 as Corey Dixon with that juggling act in the end zone finally got Nebraska on the board in the second quarter late in the second quarter with a minute and a half to play and Nebraska now trails at halftime 20 to 7 as a driving rain falls on the orange ball it was warm and sunny most of the day rain was forecast and Trump rain rolled in. Yeah, and of course for Nebraska to get back in his football game now, they got to do something that they're not used to, and that's throw the ball. For Charlie Ward, uh, he's not had a great half, but the, the scoring for Florida State in the first half has looked so easy. It looks so difficult for Nebraska. The turnover count is even one each way. There's probably going to be more, though, in the second half because this is now a torrent of rain falling. It's like a car wash here at the Orange Bowl. Halftime numbers, you can see the first downs in favor of Florida State, total yards in favor of Florida State, and there's one big play that happened in that first half, that uh, fumble, which was ruled a non-fumble by Charlie Ward, resulted in a touchdown for Florida State, going to make the game awful close, Don. No question, as you pointed out, Trevor, it was indeed a fumble, but it wasn't called one, and Florida State subsequently scored it with, if not for that touchdown be a 13 to 7 game but a lot of strange things could happen in the second half because it can't rain harder than this the kickoff downfield every kick will be an adventure from now on as tiger mcmillan runs it back he do well to protect the ball with both arms it'll be on the field shortly and here comes the corn husker offense out 
Eric Brown on the sidelines. If you see Nebraska averaging just 3.5 yards a rush, they average just under six yards a run through the season. And their top runners average over seven yards a carry. Uh, the wind, the booth here. Yes. <laughs> wind is starting to blow the rain here a little bit sideways, Don. It cannot rain harder than this. It'll pass. Nothing stays around here weatherwise very long. End up and running hard is Calvin Jones. He takes it on a power slant left and gets the ball across the 25-yard line. Eric Brooks brought him down. Uh, is this what they describe as sheets of rain? I tell you, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is an adventure now. Every step of the way from now on is an odyssey. Very rarely, Trump, in our career together have we seen it rain sideways, but it's doing that now. That's right. I think we just had one rain up. It is. Man, it's unbelievable, the rain. Let's go down to Doc if he's still uh, out of water. <laughs> well, uh, well, I'm almost drowned, but I'm hanging in there. But remember, um, Trump and Crick, when we talked to both coaches, they both wanted to drive field. Osborne said for his running uh, machine, he wanted to drive field. But it was really Bobby Bowden who said, hey, the one thing I don't want is torrential rains, which would change the flight of the ball. It would really affect our offense. So this is rain that will affect both offenses big time. Turnover is a major problem. Got to get an award for hanging in down there. Rolling now and handing off and coming back the other way for Nebraska is Calvin Jones as he takes the ball to the 30-yard line, and that brings up fourth down. Patrick McIntyre. No tackle made the stop for Florida State. Tell you one thing, you, you're a punt returner. I think you, uh, you do anything but go near the football. Let it bounce. No question about it. And it... Uh, even the uh, punt snap down is a big adventure. Stiggy is going back. He's a uh, two-time GTE Academic All-American in veterinary medicine. Yeah, he just got an $18,000 scholarship grant from the National Football Foundation and College Hall of Fame is a fair catch and signal for. <laughs> what a great punt. Boom downfield all the way down to the 15-yard line. Corey Sawyer doing his best. I'm going to catch it. Act and letting the ball fly overhead, though, and it turns out to be a 56-yard punt. So again, now Charlie Ward and the coaches from Florida State have uh, several different choices as to offense. I would think this would be the conservative approach. Run the ball. Uh, Floyd is in the game. I think... I, I do see Floyd in the game. Uh, see who else is in there running, running back. Or else got Sean Jackson in there. So Florida State can be very conservative here with this 27 lead. 20 to seven is the count. Vanover back on the field. That's good news for the Seminoles as they go to the run on first down. Nebraska forces the play. Sean Jackson ran the ball and Keneally comes up on the stop, along with Anderson, Mike Anderson, an inside linebacker. On the tackle for well, I guess if you're Florida State, uh, you don't like weather like this. Nebraska, they're thinking, well, if we're in Lincoln, it's snowing so hard we can't even see our feet. So this isn't bad. It's nice and warm. You know, a little pleasant shower. It'll pass. No big deal. A natural grass field. And this is the first time all year long that Nebraska's played on a natural grass field. That's quickly a turf league, artificial turf in the Big Eight. William Floyd runs the ball and he has stopped it about the 21 yard line game clock 11 48 to play early in the third quarter florida state after building a 20 to nothing lead now leads 20 to 7. uh don for the rest of this game now the most important factor is field position forget what you can and can't do protect the football protect your punter and play field position for the remaining half of this uh, Florida Express Orange Bowl 1993. That's Federal Express Orange Bowl 1993. It is indeed, and it is also a third down and four for the Seminole. Charlie Ward living dangerously, looking to put it up in the rain. He dumps it off to Sean Jackson. Nicely done play by the Seminole. And Jackson gets ahead to the 35-yard line for a first down. Farmer, the strong safety, comes up and nails him. 
14 yard gain. Uh, Charlie Ward's a very good choice here. He's looking downfield. He does not want a chance. He almost put this with puts this one to the running back. He didn't really throw it as much as he just, just kind of stretches it over uh, the arm. Sean Jackson with the reception. Big hit by Carmer, the strong safety. Nebraska player taken up and one of the very best, Travis Hill, their All-American outside linebacker down. And that's half the clock with 11.01 to play. Cornhuskers lost only two games this year, one to the University of Washington and then the upset at Iowa State. There's Travis Hill, 93, right in the uh, edge of the... Oh, he's hit by his own man. He's hit by John Perella, number 92, his own man. But Travis is up and he runs off the field. He'll be back. Now the rain is dissipating slightly. It's still a heavy rain. That's the fire hose we had coming in a little bit earlier. This uh, field does drain and drain very well, Don. So if it can stop raining, they can get back to their normal game plan. A hit behind the line. Sean Jackson took the ball for the Seminoles, and Nebraska was reading run and Jackson all the way. This is Don Quickie with Bob Trumpy and John Dockery at the 1993 Federal Express Orange Bowl, where the superpower from the ACC Florida State is holding to a 20 to 7 lead over Nebraska. The Seminoles build a 20 to nothing lead. Nebraska scored late in the second quarter on a 41-yard pass play, and now as torrents of rain continue to pelt the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida State operates on offense. Second down arises. They need about 11, and they go to the shotgun. Charlie Ward, their sensational junior quarterback, throws down the field and somehow finds his man against the rush. Shannon Baker, curl in pattern, and he holds down in the rain. Fourth pass complete to Shannon Baker. Those Florida State players on the side are looking for folks. Again, Charlie Ward stands very tall in the pocket. Baker just with a little curl in pattern. He's able to uh, make the connection. John Reese is the uh, was the defender in coverage. He's been picked on quite a bit today. Shannon Baker with the reception. They've been calling his number up. Shannon Baker sure-handed, and now Kamarik Vanover to strike the slight shoulder separation. The extraordinary freshman player is trying to the top of the Bumble. Great fake, and then uh, Charlie Ward did lose it, picked it up, and shot ahead to the 50-yard line. On a third and three, he gets the first down. See, it almost looks like the uh, fumble ruski that Nebraska's run here. Uh, the snap from center. Oh, we got a man down, too. It looks like it uh, might be one of the offensive linemen. Mitchell, Patrick, Patrick McNeil is down. Watch when this ball hits the ground, the uh, presence that Charlie Ward has. Comes right back up through the line of scrimmage. Nice first down pickup. Drive stays alive for Florida State. So while Patrick McNeil is attended to, there's a timeout on the field. Have you noticed that keeping up with your competition has gotten tougher? Morning, here. Well, maybe it's because your competition has gotten tougher to keep up with. Because he's using Express Freighter from Federal Express. It's the only way to get shipments from around the world sent overnight by 10.30 the next morning. So don't wait until things get out of hand. Use Express Freighter from Federal Express. Compare the new 32-valve, 280 horsepower Lincoln Mark 8 to everything else. Then you'll understand why, instead of introducing it, we decided to launch it. The new Lincoln Mark 8. What a luxury car should be. Federal Express Orange Bowl is brought to you by Federal Express, 
transport documents, packages, and freight worldwide. Our most important package is yours. Buy Diet Coke as a reminder to taste it all in 93. Buy GTE. And buy Lincoln Mercury and the complete line of Lincoln luxury automobiles. Rain continues to come down in torrents. First down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can pick the guys out of the Midwest, can't you? Down here in Miami to see the uh, Federal Express Orange Bowl. First down and ten now for Florida State. Pick back. John Jackson. Turns the corner, turns it up and is knocked out of bounds. As the Jackson penalty marker comes in, maybe late hit. Uh, Steve Carmer came across and made the stop on Jackson. Steve Face mask Price against Nebraska. The uh, Don, this is no great Eight. scoop, but I'll say this anyway. With this field, you got to go traps, you got to go leads, you got to go powers up the field. You're, you can't be thinking to the sideline here. Rain letting up somewhat, but still coming Red down. The face mask by the defense. Five yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. See if we can pick up at the end of the run. 31 is Carmer, the strong safety, the stiff arm by Jackson. And then it looks like Carmer's left hand, although I can't really pick it up exactly where the hand is on the face mask. But there was an official standing right there. straight ahead to the fullback William Floyd of Florida State he's quickly taken down by Mike Anderson with 845 to play in the third quarter Floyd on the carry. 20 to 7 is the score Florida State coming in maybe a field goal away from being number one in the country you remember Mike that missed field goal in this stadium earlier in the season against the University of Miami and the Kings prevailed that day 19 to 16 and was Florida State's only defeat of this year They've not lost a bowl game in a decade. They're 9 0 oh, 1 over the last 10 years. Nine victories in a tie against Georgia in the 84 Citrus Bowl. Florida State now done uh, alternating tight ends bringing the plays into Charlie Ward. Pitch back to Jackson. Well done by Seminoles as Jackson turns it inside the 35 yard line and down to the 34. A lob pitch. Perfect lead to Sean Jackson. First down. A very nice pitch. You see that uh, Jackson does an excellent job here of avoiding the first guy, gets his shoulder square upfield into the defensive backfield, forces the uh, defensive backs to make the tackle. Jackson from New Orleans. A lot of great players coming out of his high school, St. Augustine. Five players in this game from that high school. Lob pass. Rolled out of bounds. McCorvey, a rangy wide receiver, made the play but ruled that he did not have one foot in bounds. You only need one foot in bounds. Ball. Ruffle. Well, he doesn't quite have possession yet. Uh, hard to tell. You're looking at his back. Yeah, but he, he at least sensed where the sideline was. Made the attempt to get his feet in. The deluge has abated somewhat. And the feel is, as you point out, Trump, in surprisingly good condition. This is prescription athletic turf at the natural grass field, but it can rain with the suction system. Six inches of rain an hour. Here's an all-out blitz, and Charlie Ward eludes it. Steps up and runs ahead, and when it seems he was lost for a five-yard loss, he gets ahead and gains eight yards on the play. That's the great value of a guy like Charlie Ward, uh, as opposed to uh, using a hot receiver in a blitz. He just runs the ball almost on a quarterback draw. Eventually, Tyrone Bird makes the tackle here, number eight for Nebraska, but again, a nice pickup. Actually, considering the weather when this drive started, Florida State's done a pretty good job here at the beginning of the second half. Just for half. Good ball control. This is what they call the fast break offense, a basic shotgun. Ward swings it out, gets a nice lead on it again, and Jackson spins ahead for some yards on a third down and four play. He's very close to a first down, seems to have him. We're going to make the spot. Excellent catch by Jackson. Uh, until yesterday, we thought that the Tiger, Tiger, Tiger McMillan was going to be the starter, but obviously in practice, 
Uh, Jackson had impressed the coaching staff again the outlet receiver not thrown particularly well by Charlie Ward but it serves the function get it out there in somebody else's hands a nice move missed tackle by Toby Wright and the first time pickup oh Todd is sad they're gonna have to change the way they play defense to contain Charlie Ward all our blitzes are gonna burn him and they've been using blitzes and Ward is so quick he eludes the blitzer and the pass rush and he just takes it ahead on his own weaving his way through tacklers and I'm out for said matter of fact he said if they ran this offense the entire season Charlie Ward has to be the highest winner with the numbers he put up over the three games they used it and you saw 96 white David white he's the spy for the quarterback and all Charlie's got to do is get by him or get even with him and he can outrun him Tyre eventually uh, with a good block there to spring at Charlie Ward through the line of scrimmage, but White's got a big assignment covering Charlie Ward as that spy in his Nebraska defense. Our run to Sean Jackson, who's getting a load of work tonight for the Knowles, and he takes it close to the 10-yard line. And... And as we mentioned, here's David White, the uh, linebacker. He's listed at 250, but in fact only weighs about 225 or 230. 44 Floyd gets a good pop on him, and he's a no factor on the tackle. John Jackson's now run the ball nine times. He's gained 42 yards. That's Perry for a first down. Extended drive you talk about something with a 15th play coming up. Nice play pick. Takes the pitch. Ward throws. He comes in high. Incomplete. That was intended for McCorby. A nice little half roll again there. They're trying to pick on Reese. McCorby's already caught one over Reese tonight. Bobby Bowden talking about his bowl success. He said there's not many upsets in bowl games. You get good teams. He said you usually win because you have the better football team. Yeah, and, and in the case of these two football teams, it's all the different things that Florida State can do offensively, and it's the, the, the little things that Nebraska can't do. Look at that drive. Very impressive in the middle of a rainstorm. There's a guy set. I bet runs it through and runs it in. John Jackson, touchdown Florida State, 10 yards. A tremendous drive that started in a pouring rain, ended with the rain almost stopped. Play after play, they keep mixing the calls, a lot of power runs, 85 yards. Seven minutes and 48 seconds, 16 plays. And whatever the halftime speech was that Tom Osborne gave his team, they've forgotten it by now because Florida State's been on the field for so long. And now Dan Mowry tries the point after, and he hits it. And with 4.52 to go in the third quarter, Florida State has moved to a commanding advantage, 27-7. to But, Tom, when you watch this play, watch the way Jackson breaks away from the blocking. Nice move outside. And then when he gets his shoulders turned up, he's looking to take a prisoner here and there, and it happens to be Reese that gets in his way. A uh, nice bull run by Jackson, who's had a very good game so far tonight. Very consistent, and he protects the ball, which is not easy to do in this weather. Introducing the 32-valve 280 horsepower Lincoln Mark 8 and the most powerful argument we can make on its behalf drive everything else first the new Lincoln Mark 8 what a luxury car should be Trespass has been called the best pure action movie of the year. USA Today says it's director Walter Hill's most entertaining film since 48 hours. It's a rock the house thriller. Trespass, rated R, now playing at theaters everywhere. Today, there should not be a place where your business plan ends and your information strategy begins. The two should be one. IBM services can help you pull them together. We have management consultants to help you decide what to do. Systems consultants to show you how. Technical experts to do the job for you. Even an IBM organization will run your systems. There's never been so much help from one place before. 
There's never been a better time to do business with IBM. Nicoderm. Nicotine transderm system by prescription only. I'd heard about the Nicoderm patch, but uh, when it comes to something like that, I only go to one place for advice. Nicoderm. Ask your doctor about it. After all, who knows better? Have you seen Jay lately? <laughs> There's more comedy than ever. Hey, get out of my water. Great monologue. And more comedy. I used to have a crush on Dudley Do Right. Then I saw you. Now you be the judge. The biggest star. And more comedy. I come home, I find my wife in bed with my best friend. I said, Lenny, I have to, but you? Hot music. And more comedy. What would you like for Christmas? I don't know. I don't think you need anything, really. There's more comedy than ever. On The Tonight Show with, with Jay Leno. Leno. For years, you've heard about her. Saturday on an all-new Empty Nest, everyone finally meets Harry's long-lost daughter, Emily. I live in the garage. Well, you poor thing. Patrick's my boyfriend, Emily. You poor thing. And the stork visits nurses. I thought that big tummy was just her cheating on her deal, Emil. A brand spanking new NBC Comedy Saturday. Florida State builds on its lead, a 27 halftime advantage, now 27 to 7 after an extended 85 play drive, or 85 yard drive. There's the kickoff into the end zone by Dan Mowry. And Tyrone Hughes cannot bring it out. There's the man in the middle, number 35, Sean Jackson, who's outrushed the Nebraska team. During the Roman era, 28 was considered old. In the Middle Ages, 50 was ancient. In the 1800s, 60 was over the hill. You got it. Introducing the 32 valve, 280 horsepower, Lincoln Mark 8. And the only interior that can keep up with it. Drive the new Lincoln Mark 8, but drive everything else first. The new Lincoln Mark 8, what a luxury car should be. Hey, I'm vain. Of course I'm vain. That's why I comb my hair the way I do. I stay in shape the way I do. That's why I use Power Stick. 50% more wetness and odor fighters per stroke. Power Stick by Fabergé. Power that won't let you down. I told you I was vain. An all new Eyewitness Sunday. Alien, the force of nature, or a practical joke. Now, for the first time ever, Eyewitness the Mystery Song. An all new Eyewitness Video, NBC Sunday. The Cornhuskers of Nebraska looking for big play offense. Ready to start a drive now at their 20-yard line after an 85-yard drive for a score by Florida State. One of the Huskers' best players, outside linebacker Travis Hill, a consensus All-American, going off the field with an apparent knee injury. So it doesn't look like Travis will be back on the field tonight. Great take by Tommy Frazier, and he lets it rip long. Corey Dixon's going for it, and it's picked off. Down with the ball. There's Leon Fowler. He's knocked down to the 34-yard line. There's also a penalty marker down where Fowler made the interception. We'll see if there's any pass interference. Actually, you know, uh, Tommy Frazier went for the home run. The illegal block against Florida State. Attacked 15 yards on that. Frazier went all the way downfield. Hawkins, 38, was open about 15 yards deep. There's a the, live arm, though. Yeah, here's the outside receiver. Zone coverage by Florida State. Corey Fuller up front. Leon Fowler in the back. Fowler with a fine catch. Oh, I'll tell you. For the interception. Excellent play by Leon Fowler, who had some problems in the SEC 
And some of the opposition earlier this season getting beat deep. Well, you can see that the Nebraska is in a desperate situation to make uh, things happen as quick as possible here. Throw the ball up, try to uh, find one of your receivers, make a, a great play. And after Florida State's seven minute and 48 second drive to score, Nebraska had the ball for a grand total of 14 seconds there, time. Let's go downstairs quickly to John Dockery. Doc? Uh, thank you, Crick. I'm underneath the stadium here trying to stay warm with Bob, who is uh, the departing athletic director for Nebraska. 31 years, uh, Bob, never a losing football season. Who are some of the players, what are some of the big games that you remember over those 31 years at Nebraska? Well, it's Fred Alberts, the tackle for Nebraska. Bob Brown were uh, great football players, and, and uh, Willie, Willie Ross, Ruby Johnson, uh, Lloyd Boss and uh, Larry Kramer, a lot of guys who went on and played pro ball. And then uh, in the last few years, why we had guys like Johnny Rogers there that was a very, very outstanding player. And then during one period of time, they had Mike Rozier, Irving Pryor, some of those players. I remember those players. The game I remember most was the game we played Oklahoma when we were one and two in the country and played them in Norman, Oklahoma. And won the ball game 35-31. Some, some great memories, some great moments. We thank you for it, and good luck in the future to you, Bob. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Bob Devaney, a hallmark name in college football. At least from the spot of the foul, we'll go half the distance to the goal line. Repeat second down. That completion to uh, Mr. Hanover, to Marek Hanover, an excellent throw by Charlie Ward, but uh, the penalty negates it. Now Florida State backed up, got to protect the ball. They the only way that Nebraska can get back in this football game is you watch the throw to to uh, Vanover just over the outstretched hands of the cornerback. They can't turn it over here, down. They got to protect it. Now with the mics down on the field, this high-tech equipment does not respond well to rain, as you might imagine. There is a give to Tiger McMillan, and Nebraska's down linemen stay home and make the stop. David White making a lot of plays, number 96. He's right over the center. He reads this as a draw trap, and he's right there to uh, make the, the tackle on Ty Tiger McMillan. A little or no game. Let me get out in the field and see how it does out there, okay, Terry? It might have been just because... On the scoreboard, they have it marked second down and 20 coming up. On the field, they have it third down and 20. Got an injury here for uh, Florida State's offensive line. Uh, Stevenson, Rob Stevenson coming off to the sideline being assisted by the trainers. Here comes the rain again, Don. Yep. Big time. I mean, it is exactly that. Sheets of rain. Florida State. Obviously a team that practices in a lot of rain in North Florida and Tallahassee various times during the year seems to operate well in it. Nobody plays better in rain than the Miami Dolphins. Henley Markers go down at the snap of the ball with two minutes and 58 seconds to play in the third quarter. They're down the field being attended to is tackle oh, Robert Stevenson. Yeah, he's uh, looking at his uh, shoulder as uh, Florida State uh, uh, moves off the ball here. Stevenson having the uh, doctor look at his right shoulder. He has been a real standout at tackle. Not an especially big player, but tremendously quick. With the penalty calls so far tonight, Florida State with more yardage assessed against them, but they've overcome it. Now from the end zone, ready to throw in the rain from his own end zone is Charlie Ward, but wait, oh, he's on the run, and he's in the open field. Barty moving ahead and getting across the 15-yard line, still way short of the first down. That was a third and 24 play. He'll be about 13 yards short of the first down, so Florida State sends out his punter. Don, that looked like a design play. Watch when he rolls. It looks like the offensive line are going to set up for a pass. There is pressure from the outside, but Ward so very gifted at running the ball away from pressure. He doesn't pick up, pick up the first down, but he certainly gives his punter an awful lot of room. A lot more comfortable for Mr. Wimbledon. 
Wimberley. John Wimberley ready to boom the ball. Big rush. Nebraska goes for the block. Almost got to it. Running with the ball now is Tyrone Hughes for the Cornhuskers, and he's down to the 47-yard line of Florida State. Sterling Palmer on the tackle, a 36-yard punt and a 6-yard return. Huskers to go on offense when we come back. When you rent from Hertz in Florida, you get more than a great car at a great rate. The real bargain is the company behind the car. Because whatever it takes to make your vacation go smoothly, Hertz is there to make it happen. From emergency road service that's as close as a phone to free unlimited mileage. Think about it. Next time you're in Florida, wouldn't you feel better with Hertz behind you? Hertz, we're America's wheels. I was born in a small town. That's where my customers, where my customers are. are. Who would know better how to welcome business travelers to small towns and big towns than Holiday Inn? It's just like the town I was born in. Holiday Inn. Stay with someone you know who really knows you. Compare the new 32-valve, 280-horsepower Lincoln Mark 8 to everything else. Then you'll understand why, instead of introducing it, we decided to launch it. The new Lincoln Mark 8. What a luxury car should be. You're looking at the birth of an entirely new form of antacid. New Mylanta gel caps. Easy to swallow with absolutely no chalky taste. The potency of Mylanta antacid now in a gel cap. My doctor said Mylanta. Why did the Oscar-winning director of Rain Man, Diner, The Natural, Good Morning Vietnam, and Bugsy decide his next story could only be told on television? Find out after the Super Bowl. Barry Levinson's Homicide on NBC. Just wait till you see it. 1.50 to go in the third quarter. Nebraska with the ball, trailing 27-7. First down and 10 play, a power set, double tight end, three backs. On the near side, and Calvin Jones breaks it open down to the 40-yard line, again on the play of about seven or eight yards. Our thanks for tonight's overhead shots to Captain Maloney and the crew of the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes from Pompano Beach, Florida. Uh, you know, uh, they give uh, a most valuable player award to a player, but... Uh, the good captain up there deserves something for keeping that blimp up in this rainstorm and the camera still working. And no lightning, that might not be a great place to believe when the lightning starts up. I don't want to be up there in the rainstorm, Don. Second down play. Florida State playing the run all the way. Hodrick McIntosh, the nose tackle, makes the stop. Guy starting up after the plays. There's another penalty marker down off the line of scrimmage, and it's going to apparently be against Nebraska. At least Florida State thinks so. Yeah, it looked like uh, looked like an offensive lineman got a little uh, personal foul against Nebraska. Yeah, it is. It's Weger, the offensive right tackle. He uh, carried a block a little too far downfield on uh, Ken Alexander and then took a punch at him. Normally, they'll throw flags on that. Watch 72 down here in the bottom of the screen if we can see the end of the play. He gets on Alexander. Now they're going to go out of frame. But uh, they were pushing and shoving and punching. They the get the Cornhusker. Last meeting between these two teams was in 1990 in the Fiesta Bowl when Florida State won going away 41-17. And that game was keyed by turnover play. Nebraska turned the ball over three times in the first quarter. George Osborne saw his team fall behind because of it. There's the push and shove by Weigert on Alexander. That resulted in the penalty. Negated the capital offense and all. Replay. Everybody's still 15 yards. Frazier swings it over to Calvin Jones and he takes it up ahead. And here's another penalty marker down as Florida State had it defense. Reggie Freeman may be called for defensive holding here. 
Mark and Simpson on the tackle. Are they going to call it on the offense? It was Reggie Freeman who was held apparently because he was protesting something to the official. Bill Gross from the SEC, our referee, and his mic is gone right now. See if we can pick it up on the right-hand side of the screen. Yeah, there's the grab. It is on Reggie Freeman. He was the one who was held. You called it correctly, Mr. Cricky. And it brings us down to one minute to play in the third quarter. Huskers, despite their 27-7 disadvantage, huddling at their leisure and getting ready to punt the ball back to Florida State. Mike Stiggy. They thought his kicking might be a factor in the outcome of tonight's game. The best net average punter in the NCAA Division I record this year. Hits it downfield, and Corey Sawyer lets it roll, and Florida State will take over the ball. First in Canada Seminoles 21 yard line. Sunday, join us at 12 noon Eastern Time as playoff football comes to NBC. Buffalo Bills have gone to the Super Bowl, as you know, the past two years. Each time they've come away with a loss. This season, the Bills let the AFC East title slip away in the last game of the season. Could it be that Buffalo is no longer the AFC power has been for the past few years? Sunday, before the Bills battle the Oilers, tune in to NFL Live as O.J. Simpson examines the Bills' predicament. That's all the latest news with Bob Costas, O.J. Simpson, Will McDonough, and special guest Cincinnati Bengals quarterback Boomer Esiason. It's all Sunday at noon at 12 o'clock. Eastern time, and then it's on the Ritz Stadium for the rematch. The last Sunday night's game, the Oilers and the Bills, this time with the winner advancing. Now on the run, Sean Jackson breaking the five there, the Nebraska defender, and running it all the way down to the 31 yard line. Boy, a surprise starter for Florida State. He's had a big game in bad weather situations. That's a 42 yard pickup. Excellent blocking up front. The offensive line from the two-point stance. Watch Floyd, 44. He hits Anderson, 48 on the outside. Nice move by Sean Jackson. Big pickup. First down, Florida State. Big block on the play by the tackle, John Fla. 42-yarder gets the Seminoles in scoring position. He gets the least challenging to set up a score as Ward takes a deep drop in the rain. Emily Marker goes down, and Charlie Ward pumps making takes it on a run. It could be a holding call on Florida State. It is against Florida State. You know, I don't want to digress, but did that promo on uh, NFL Live. You realize this weekend we have an Orenthal and a Norman on NFL Live. Orenthal James Simpson and Norman Julius Esiason <laughs> talking about football. Buffalo, despite his injury problems and despite the fact that Bills were manhandled on Sunday night at the Astrodome, Bills will take the field as a favorite. Here's the infraction now as Charlie Ward starts to scramble. Ooh, cutting the legs. Cutting the legs, not a good idea. That's flat again, number 68. Uh, I understand also in that uh, Buffalo Houston game that Cody Carlson will probably be the starting quarterback, and for sure it's going to be Frank Wright for Buffalo. Jim Kelly is definitely out of that game, and this week Cody has taken more snaps than Warren Moon has in the practice session, although so, uh, Moon has been practicing. He'll be in uniform and active. Tiger McMillan runs the ball, and that'll do it for three quarters of play. As Florida State builds on its halftime lead of 20 to 7, to where they've now extended it 27 to 7. Back after these words from your local station. What do you think happens when a butler wins the lottery? One problem. We tricked you into thinking you won. It's an all new fresh prince. Then, how are we going to entertain a 16 year old girl? I just know this girl's going to be a beast. Blossom with guest star Arsenio Hall, NBC Monday. Martin Short is brilliant. Mm -hmm. Danny Glover is stellar. Oh, stay still. No, go! For the first time on television. Pure luck, NBC Monday. Coming up tonight on 11 Alive News. I'm Dean Phillips. We have exclusive new information to report in the Sarah Tokar's murder investigation. That's coming up after the game. We'll tell you how the Tokar's children responded when they were asked to identify a suspect in the police lineup. 
Also coming up tonight, a child is dead, a mother is in jail. I'll tell you why police say they knew her all too well. The kind of fireworks we don't like to see to ring in the new year. All for you at the football. Great family values. Right now, what's real? Right now. Low monthly payments. Get a Plymouth Acclaim for just $1.99 a month. With room for six, a great owner's choice warranty, and the added safety of a driver's airbag and available four-wheel anti-lock brakes. All for just $1.99 a month with Gold Key Plus. But hurry, offer ends soon. What's real? A great buy on a claim. Chrysler, the most award-winning car company in the world. Now that's a real advantage. When the winter storm rolls in, depend on 11 Alive News. A hard freeze warning. The first Atlanta television station to bring you Doppler radar. Taking a look at live radar. For first alert, bringing you the most accurate information first when you need it most. A travel advisory is in effect. More combined experience than any weather team in Georgia. Here's an updated list of closings. The tools, the team, the experience of being there. When severe weather threatens Georgia, depend on 11 Alive News. Have a safe and happy new year from 11 Alive. King Orange smiling in the rain here at the Federal Express Orange Bowl. Speed wins and Nebraska cannot handle the team speed of Florida State if there's even the slightest defensive mistake. On offense, the Seminoles Trump just beat it with blinding speed. They all can run. And it appears when they're working, it, it looks so easy. I mean, their receiver's wide open, Don. Blitz hit. That time, the Huskers come with an outside blitz. Trev Alberts, number 34, came through. That is the first sack of the day for Nebraska. One of the things that they wanted to do was to get on Charlie Ward. Alberts comes from the outside, beating the offensive tackle for a pretty easy sack. Long way to go now for Charlie Ward on the Seminoles offense as it'll be third down and 34. You got Tamaric Van over at the top of your screen. This is a long ball offense all by himself out there. Do we uh, pencil in the reverse? Nope. Tiger McMillan. Back to Doc on the sidelines in the rain. Perhaps you thought I left, Crick and Trump. I'm still here. Don't worry about it on the soggy sidelines. Couple of things. Travis Hill, knee injury, fairly serious. You will not see him back today for Nebraska. Also, if you take a look at the field, it actually has terrific drainage because it's prescription turf. It has pumps underneath the turf to get the water out of here. So the rain itself won't collect that much on the field. Still very soggy down here. Back to you guys in the dry booth. <laughs> a semi drive booth here, Doc. We're not completely safe yet. Here's a kick downfield, and Corey Dixon, who caught the touchdown pass, runs the ball back across the 30 and gets to the 32-yard line. That's a very difficult development for that great young player for Nebraska, their outside linebacker, Travis Hill, with the knee injury that John Docker was talking about because he is projected as a high-round NFL draft choice, a consensus All-American. Yeah, it does affect him big time because the, the NFL combine is uh, not too long from now. And uh, the ACL, the anterior cruciate ligament, normally requires surgery. I certainly wish the best for Travis Hill. That is awful news. First down, Nebraska. And they're all 30. Tommy Frazier and the Cornhuskers go first and 10 from the 30. A quick hitter up the middle. Derek Brown, Derek Brown runs the ball ahead for a gain of about four yards. Trailing 27-7 in the fourth quarter. They get the ball and they run a lead play. There's Charlie Ward on the sideline, headset on. Well, it won't be long, less than 20 hours, he'll be playing basketball. You don't have to worry about rain on the basketball court. Mark Vano was a good basketball player. Also, they had the team agility drills. He hit on. If you look at Frazier throw the quick out and hit Vincent Hawkins. Mark Vanover had a uh, standing leap, vertical leap of 40 inches. And coach Bowden says to the coaches, next time he jumps, I want the door closed. I don't want to see Kennedy, the basketball coach, seeing this. <laughs> 
Well, again, uh, I hate to repeat myself. It's a little bit different. 27-7. Uh, fourth quarter and Nebraska runs a lead and then a quick out. There, this is just not a big play home run offense. Straight ahead they go to Calvin Jones. Nebraska's success in the recent Calvin years built on the power here. running game like the old Yankee team where they used to build up a five or six run lead in the third innings and then start to pull away. These guys used to come out, powering the ball, touchdown after touchdown. Yeah, the uh, Yankees used to survive on that uh, a bloop, a bloop, and a blast. Yeah, they did it add up in a hurry, wouldn't it? That's Marvin Jones. Hey, y'all, if you're a good Marvin Jones. The spoken word there on the sideline to be heard as he yet again goes to Calvin Jones for Nebraska, and he dives across the 45 yard line. Calvin Jones, the ball carrier. I don't know what to say about these big eight teams that come down here. You know, when they come down here and, and uh, when Nebraska has been good, man, they're awful good. And they can overpower football teams. But look at here, the, the, the 2.9 yard average, each one of these running backs has rushed for 1,000 yards. Uh, Jones, 7 to a carry. Brown, 6 yards a carry. But they come down in this orange bowl and it just doesn't work. Even a little bit. It was close for a while. And here now as Frazier takes a deep look, he's going to be on the run. He'll beat the linebacker, head for the sideline, and get out of bounds inside the 40. Corey Sawyer, number eight, came up and stuck him. Sawyer, the lightest player on the defense of the Seminoles, but a terrific player. 16 yard gain on the run by Frazier. Good choice here by Frazier. Yeah, it's a play action fake. Slight little roll, and he sees nobody open, and he does have good running skills. All Nebraska running backs through the years, I should say quarterbacks through the years, have had good running skills. I asked Corey at the 160 pounds, and he's noted for playing the run and coming up and really with run support hitting hard. I said, yeah, hurt him. He's not yet. It'll happen. <laughs> It'll happen. Downfield throw, and Dixon has the ball and goes to the one-yard line. Frazier's made some brilliant throws. That was one of them, a 37-yarder down to the one-yard line. Leon Fowler was the man in coverage. Again, a, a little play-action fake. See right at the top of the screen, boy. Dixon goes right by Fowler. If he catches it cleanly, he scores. But he has to catch it on the rebound. Fowler able to catch up. And it's first and goal for Nebraska. Hey, Dixon's having a career here for the rest of the season. Oh, he is going to get five balls in a year. Four, in a, in four years at Nebraska. Great play. End zone touchdown. And it's taken in by Gerald Armstrong. Most of the ones he catches are for touchdown. That is his ninth reception of the year. Eight have been for touchdowns. Well, the tight ends for Nebraska catch touchdown passes. Of the 16 that have been caught by Nebraska tight ends, now 10 of the 16 receptions by Nebraska, 10 by tight ends for scores. And he just releases off the line of scrimmage. They drop him, seven plays, 70 yards. Three minutes and five seconds, Nebraska in the end zone. Root. Point after is hit up and good, and the Huskers now have 14 and are two touchdowns away. They'll be kicking off in a moment. 